Hello everyone and welcome to In It To Win It. I'm Jake and I'm here with my dear friend Raymond. Today we're going to play Banger or Bottom of the Barrel. So my friend Raymond here has never even seen a magic card in his life. So we're going to change that and hopefully get him into a massive amount of debt and a <laughs> lifelong addiction. So I have 10 cards set out for you here. Okay. You're going to tell me Banger or Bottom of the Barrel. If you want to guess the price, you can, but I don't expect you to do that, to be honest. Like, No. And plus, I don't even know the prices on these cards. Because they, they fluctuate so much that it's... Okay, so bad. we'll just do, I guess, bottom of the barrel. Um, yeah, do you want to go row by row? Or we did the mock one not too long ago, and you just picked whatever card you want. Yeah, I think I'm going to just go random, because I think that way, like... Go for Wait, it. they're not in any order, right? I just literally just threw them on the, on the play mat. Okay, okay. Um, so let's see, okay. Uh, starting off with this one. What do we have here? Hole Breaker Horror. Kranken Horror. Kraken? Oh. <laughs> Kraken Horror? Kranken. Okay, so it's Flash. The spell can't be countered. Whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one. Return target spell you don't control to its owner its owner's hand. Return target and all land permit. So the concept art looks good, but uh, I don't know. What is it? Seven out of eight? Remember that's uh, power toughness? Seven out of eight? This thing? Yeah, those numbers at the bottom is how much damage it deals and how much damage it can take. But then you also have to account mana yeah, cost, yeah, right. um, stuff like that. Bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel, is that your final answer? It is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed, in fact, a banger. Oh this card God, is this already disgusting. <laughs> Dude, whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one. Return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. I can return people's things every time I play spells. Disgusting card. This card can go infinite with the right setup. Uh, All right. right, 0 for 1. 0 Not for starting 1. good. I I'm knew that one would stop you. No, yeah, because the card started looking good, good yeah. but it's just, but at the same time, I was like, nah, maybe it's a trick. Yeah. All right, let so, me see. All right, we'll leave him there, yeah. Okay, let's see this one. Oh, this one looks nice. Oh, man. Oh, read the name of it. Come on. Hunting Pack. Hunting Pack. Instant. Put a 4 by 4. Four, no, four divided by four, four half four. A uh, four four. Okay, four four. <laughs> these creature token into play. Oh um, Storm, when you're playing the spell, copy it for each spell played bef before it is in turn. Oh, dude, this just looks so cool, but I think it's so bad. Like, um, uh, There's some things, you, you know, when you look at a, count, a card, you have to really take into account mana cost, stuff like that. Yeah. Instant, so it can be done on anybody's turn. And then Storm is also a mechanic. A mechanic? It's, it's like a game mechanic. Storm oh. isn't a... So this, this spell will get copied for every spell you've cast before. Um, That's what Storm is. I'm just explaining to you what Storm is. Dude. Okay. Banger. Banger? Yeah. This card is bottom of the barrel. I knew the Storm description would get him off. Storm is a really broken mechanic, but seven mana for a 4-4 four four is five nuts. Moment. No, it's five colors and two green. Oh, okay. Seven mana is nuts. Bro, but it just With looks that cool. much mana, and you have to cast spells before this. Plus this seven mana, bro, like, yeah, no. That's seven mana for a four four, which is. But it just looks so cool, man. The concept it's, yeah, because really cool. the old. It's like a tiger. It's thing. an old card, that's why. So those those arts are, are nice. All right, let me see. Oh my god. <laughs> Why is there, why is there, why is there a An paragraph? older one! This is uh, Shahrazad. Why is there a, a paragraph to this? Because Sorcery. it's, oh, and old magic wording is like horrible. Players must leave game in progress as it is and use the cards left in their libraries as decks. I'm not reading all this. This is way too much, but it seems very, hold up. It's a two mana sorcery. Two white mana. The sub game has no Bro, but I don't know because I'm in between. Do you understand what the card does before like you make a decision? Because like if you if sorcery, you, isn't that like casting spells and stuff? Yeah. So the difference between a sorcery and an instant, they're spells. But sorceries can only be cast on your turn. Instants can be cast whenever. Okay. So that that has to be done on your turn. But do you understand what that ability does? Like the no. what the spell does? The paragraph? No. Uh, I didn't want to read the whole thing. 
So you're just gonna guess off the looks? Ah, oh, so fine, I'll read it. Uh, players must leave game in progress, as it is, and use the card left in their libraries as decks with which to play a sub-game of magic. What? <laughs> when sub-game is over, players shuffle these cards, return them to libraries, and resume game in progress, with any loser of the second having his or her remaining life points rounding down. Effects that prevent damage may not be used to counter the loss of life. The sub-game has no ante, or the sub ante. Game has no ante. Oh yeah, like it has no using less than forty cards maybe. Mm. Uh, I'm not gonna say any more on the card. No, I know, cause you might give it away. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I'll wait for your decision. All right, I'll put banger. Is that your final answer? This card is indeed a banger. Ah, oh, let's go. This card is so good. Well, it's not. It's banned in every format. What? Because it's. So you can't Ridiculous. play that card? Yeah, because it's well, in legal, like if you go to a tournament, you can't play this card. But with your friends, be like, yeah, you can play it. We don't care. Oh, I see. Yeah, because uh, there's like a sub game involved. Yeah, so you start at this game prolongs magic by like. Because it's, it's basically like you're playing a game, you cast this. All right, stop your game, now you're going to start another one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that's. It's, it's like disgusting. a loophole. Well. Because then, what? If you win in that game, it has no. It doesn't? Outco like, the outcome of that game does not do anything to the main game. So you have to play an entire game and then go back to your game. But then what's the point of that? I don't know. This is the delay a time. massive waste of time. This so, is the delay time to get you exhausted, like your yeah, brain just is concede, like yeah. melted, like melt. So my opinion is this, this card is a win con in decks with people that have time restrictions. So somebody might come to a table and be like, oh, I only have an hour to play before I go to work. You whip this bad boy out, you play this and he's going to be like, I can see automatic win. No. Oh, I see. But, okay. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. But oh. yeah, this game, this card was banned because it prolonged games by like a ridiculous amount of time. Yeah, I really don't see a point. It's a banger. I would run this card just to mess with my friends 100%. Uh, but yeah, I like that card. To me, it's a banger. Especially in Commander. Those games We're are already playing like, two games simultaneously. Yeah, like, commander games are already like an hour and twenty minutes. Now guess what? Add another one on top of it that has no direct outcome to the. Okay, I yeah. mean, I just got lucky Massive on that one to be honest. Because yeah, at first I was gonna be like, nah. I wanted to show you that card because like old magic cards are like this. They're like weird. No, yeah, and I was like, gonna be like, yeah, it looked bad, so I was like, nah, it's probably not. All right, let's see. Smothering Tithe? Smothering Tithe, yeah. Enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two mana? Yeah, two colorless mana. <clears throat> if the player doesn't, doesn't, you create a colorless treasure artifact token with some reverse tap. Uno reverse tap, mechanic. Oh. tap. okay. Uh, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color. I await your donation. Flavor text. Um, so this is like a... Like a resource card? Like, um, like you're just gaining resources, like a Monopoly move. Yeah, it's like a support like card. You're landing in my hotel, you had to give me... Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, how much mana do you start with? No, it's when you start, you have like no lands, and then you play one land per turn. And then you can have things... There's other cards that give you mana. So you could like... The most mana I've ever had on turn one is like four or five. But four that, or five? Yeah, but that's like competitive. Like those decks are like really expensive. But casually, one. Unless you get a soul. Well, you start with one mana? With, with one, one land. These. Yeah, one land. Okay, then, but how fast does it take for you to build that money? Well, that if you're putting out. a land every turn, by turn three And you can four. only put... You, and then there's spells that get you more lands from your deck onto the battlefield. And then there's artifacts that tap for mana. So you use those... But yeah. how many of those can you draw in a turn? It depends what kind of deck you're playing. Are you playing an Artifacts Matter deck? Green decks have the spells that get you lands. So it really depends. Okay, this is bottom of the barrel. Right? Bottom of the barrel, are you sure? Yeah. This card's a banger, dude. This is a competitive card. This card is so dis... This is the best white card in Magic. Really? This is the best white card in Magic, 100%. Because this... That's whenever an opponent draws a card. Uh, an opponent can draw like 10 cards in their turn. And if they don't pay two mana for each draw, you make a treasure token. Oh, for each? Yeah. 
Oh, I thought it was draw. one card. Well, that's... Off, off your turn, you draw a card, but you can have other cards that draw your cards. Or other spells that draw your cards. So yeah, it's for is, each one. Oh, this gives you okay, so much makes, mana. That makes way more sense now. Because yeah, I thought it was just like, oh, they drew one card, so they pay you two, but it's... Treasure like, tokens are mana. So this gives you so much mana. By the time you get back to your turn after casting this, you'll have like two, at least two treasures. That's two extra mana. It pays for itself in like... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now that... Now, considering how many you can put in... And yeah, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. You I'm use like, it? It's expensive. I use it. I have to use it. But it's like... I won't put it in the deck, and I'm like, you know what, I don't really need Smothering Tithe. And then I'll actually put it in the deck for one game, and then I'll just go crazy with it. Yeah, it'll it'll start, get me like 15 treasures in one yeah. game, yeah. Alright. So you're no, one no. for four. People might disagree with me about Shahrazad, but I don't care. I think so it's hilarious. So you're basically 0 for 4 potentially? Potentially 0 for 4, depending on somebody's opinion. Okay, here we go. Lillian, Death Mage, Liliana. Oh, Death Liliana. Mage. Okay, so this is a type of card you haven't seen before. It's Imagine. Planeswalker. Planeswalker. So Ooh. when you cast a Planeswalker, you can activate any of these abilities. Return up to one target creature. But you have to, like, if you, you can't do the minus seven ability if she only enters with four counters. This is what she enters with, and you have to do the add ability until you get to seven, and then... Destroy target creature. Its controller loses two lives. Return up to one. Bro. Oh, my God. This looks like Wanda. <laughs> she has the Wanda powers. Legendary Planeswalker Lillian. What is that M21? That's the set that it came from. Like oh. here, this is the set it came from was Arabian Nights. This is Innistrad. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Oh, dang. I don't know. Crap. Um, target component loses two life for each creature and card in their graveyard. That's like its ultimate ability. This is bottom of the barrel. So. Is it your final answer? It is. This is indeed bottom of the Yes! Ball. This is probably the worst Liliana in Magic. She's actually a really good Planeswalker. Stop banging on the table. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Liliana yeah, is one of the same. strongest Planeswalkers in Magic, but she has like eight different versions, and I think this is, this might be one of the worst ones. Alright, so, so what am I? I'm two, two for, for five. It, wow. Depending 50 on opinion. 50%? Well, not well, even. 40. 40%. 40%. But so, you still got half the board. You know, you only have to get three of these. Ah, I really, I really gotta step it up. I gotta step it up. This one really just, that was the one that out of all of them was like, dang. Yeah. See, I started putting things with cool art because you're like, oh, the bangers are the ones with cool art. Because you would think that, right? That sells too. No, it's just, oh. all magic cards have good art. Well, most of them. Yo, what is this? Chaos Warp. Chaos Warp. So is that a rhinoceros? Instant. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. Oh my god. I don't understand any of this. The owner of target permanent shuffles it. Well, the point of the video was to show you magic cards for the very first time. So. I know, but... Uh. Yo, why is the rhinoceros... Why does he have a sword? He's getting... Well, there's like... Why does he have feet? Oh, he's turning into a. He's rhinoceros. getting chaos warped, bro. Oh, that's the art. Okay, now I get it. The owner of target permanent. What is target permanent? So like, the owner of target permanent. So like, permanent on the battlefield. This is a permanent. This is a permanent. This is a permanent. These are no. spells. So these, as soon as you use them, they go in the graveyard. Enchantments they've already been and used. creatures are permanent. Creatures, enchantments, planeswalkers, artifacts, lands. Okay. Target permanent. It would have to say, see, because this says target non-land permanent. Okay. That says target permanent, so you could do a land with that. And what, how would you know the top card of their library? They shuffle it random. It's random. So they don't know. So, so they just pick it up and shuffle So, yeah. So the owner of target permanent shuffles it into the library. Okay. So I take, you're going to Smalling Tithe, shuffle. Oh, and then they put it in. And then they put it into their library and then. So it can be good or bad for them. Yeah. Bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel, is that your final answer? Yeah. This is a banger. Oh my god. This is a banger. Every Chaos time. Warp is probably one of the best red removal spells in Magic. This can get rid of anything. I mean, yeah. Red has a lot of spells that where it's like, you shuffle and then it's like chaos. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's like, like you don't know So they could out. get an upgrade, but if you're using this on a Smothering Tithe, there's not many things better than a Smothering Tithe. Or you could do it on some lands. Some lands give you problems. Hmm. You can get rid of that land. So you have to be careful what you use this on, obviously. 
I would save this for things that really are detrimental to you and your game. But yeah. No, but I think that is really good. Um, but what if what they bring out isn't beneficial to them? It's just like, yeah, because they can smothering tithe and then be like, all right, you're going to get rid of my swing tithe. I'm going to shuffle it. I'm going to reveal a hunting pack on the top of my library. And it's not a permanent, so they can't put it on the battlefield. So now they're stuck with this on the top of their library and they draw that for their turn. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. So I am. Yeah, this. Two, four, six. So you're two for six. With, you're at 33.33333333%. Uh, <sighs> like, my field goal percentage needs to go up. Your right, field goal percentage? Yeah, bro. I'm like missing every shot right now. Boom. What is this? Read it for the viewers at home. I don't see it. Gamble. 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 What is that? One mana? One red mana. Search your library for a card. Put that card into your hand. Then discard a card at random. Shuffle your library afterwards. Dude, what is this? What? Okay, search your library for a card. Put that card into your hand. Mm -hmm. And then... Then discard a card, a card at random. So discard is like you, like you get rid of a card from your hand. So it's like at random, it's like you just. There's many ways to so do. So you random. shuffle it, you put them, then you just take one out. Yeah, usually what it is is that you roll a dice, and be like, oh, one through six, whichever one it lands on, I discard. Or you can be like an opponent, like here, pick one, make it easier. Um, but then shuffle your library afterward. I mean, that doesn't. What does the order of your cards have to do with anything? What do you mean? No, it's just shuffle your library. No, it shuffles it to change it. Anytime okay. you search your library, you're going to shuffle it. For a land, a card, anything like that, you shuffle. That's just how magic is. Search your library for a card, put that card into your hand. It's one mana though. Why would you use this? Shuffle your library out the word. This is bottom of the barrel. I don't make it. Is there a final answer? Yeah. This is a banger. Ah! It is a one mana tutor. Put any card in your deck into your hand. I'm gonna cast them and put a smothering dice into my hand. I just have to, hopefully it doesn't get discarded at random, but. But that's my point. You might lose your good stuff. It's, to, to get the best, if you have seven cards in your hand, mm -hmm. and you pay one mana, one, on turn one you can do this. Get your best card in your deck in your hand. Would you take those odds? One out of seven? Uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah. This is a competitor oh, card. See. I this see. This is a competitor card. It's in my competitive deck. Oh, I see. I get it. I get yeah. it. You take that chance, no matter what. <sighs> Especially in, in competitive. Man, yeah, I should have thought about the whole man. Two for seven. I don't know the percentage of two out of seven. I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like doing it. No, yeah. Um, let's see. Olivia Voldaren. 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 Legendary creature, a vampire. Olivia Voldaren deals one damage to another target creature. That creature becomes a vampire in addition to its type. Put a one out of one, one, one. A uh, one, one counter, so like it like buffs it. So instead of this being a seven, eight, it would be an eight, nine. Um, gain control of target vampires as long as you control Olivia. So wait, so you put this down, mm -hmm. this thing now gets stronger by one. Yeah, if you target it with that, yeah. But and she, it becomes a vampire, so it's now a Kraken horror vampire. But it deals one damage to another creature. Yeah, like it would deal one damage to this, but it's, you know, I mean, that's not gonna deal that. So it gives you one damage, but then you increase it by one? No, you make it a vampire, but you then you have to read the second ability. Gain control of target vampire for as long as you control the other one. Because now since you made this a vampire, you can gain control of it. Banger. Banger? Yeah. Is that your final answer? It is. This is bottom of the barrel. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude. What? Two mana to make any creature a vampire? That's not so bad. And you buff it though. That's like, ugh. One damage and you buff it just to make it a vampire. Just to pay five mana for the second ability. That second ability costs more than she does. Oh, I didn't see that though. That's why. It costs more than she does and it's for as long as you control her. So if she dies, they get their thing back and now it's buffed. Because oh you put gosh. a one counter on it. That is bottom of the barrel. I mean, I see vampire decks run it, and they re people really try to make this card good, and I can see why, but there's just better vampires out there for vampire decks. There's multiple vampire stuff? Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of vampires. It's one of the best tribes in the game. Yeah, because why? They're like in... They're, they're pretty good. They're they, like, buff each other up? Yeah, they have... There's a few commanders out. There's five commanders that have the eminence ability. Is it five or is it four? 
I don't remember. Um, um, and a vampire is one of them. He says whenever you cast a vampire, you make a vampire. But then being a vampire does what to your creature? Or to it's whatever. just a creature type, but you can have cards that do stuff like there's there's a lot of vampire support. Like whenever a creature dies, put a one-one counter on this creature. If it's a vampire, put two one-one counters on it instead. So stronger? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's But then why is that? It's a top three tribe in the game. Well, why, is it now one, one. why isn't that one a banger then? Because it's so expensive. That that ability to get that done is just... So there's a cheaper one? Yeah, there's all. Oh, vampires have two other ways to gain control of creatures, and they're absolutely disgusting. Captivating vampire? Why can you know how many times I've been hit by captivating vampire? Damn you, Manny! <laughs> and he has the spell. The spell that um, it gains control of creature and then changes all their text to vampire. He took my commander once. My commander makes soldiers. Is it make a 1 1 soldier for each soldier you control? Mm -hmm. And of that card, it changes the text of soldier to vampire. So now you're making vampires? So he took my commander and made it a vampire and says, whenever it attacks, make a vampire for each vampire you make. And so I was like. So he's like multiplying everything. Yeah, that spell's disgusting. That's crazy. Vampires. Yeah. Damn. I was like, Damn. oh my god. I wish you would have put one of those in here, bro. Dang. Two for eight. See, that was a bit controversial though, because then yeah. if I would have had no prior knowledge, or I guess some prior knowledge, thought the vampire. Yeah, if I would have showed you that other card, now now I can't show you the captivating vampire. Now, cause you're gonna be like, yeah, because I'm gonna be like, oh, yeah, for sure. Be like, ah, this is free, bro. <laughs> I don't have to pay five mana for seven mana to gain control of a creature. All right, bro, you are two for eight. Dang, bro, that's you're terrible. A quarter, twenty-five percent, bro. You're gonna get. I'm gonna send you to the bench. Bench warmer. All right, let's see. Toxic Deluge. Toxic Deluge. Sorcery. As an additional cost to cast a spell, pay 10 life? X, X life? No, it's just X life. Twitter life? So as additional cost, you pay the mana and you pay that cost. All creatures get negative Twitter. Negative Twitter? <laughs> Until end of the turn. It's a difficult task to quarantine a plague that moves with the clouds. Uh, two mana is an additional cost of the spell. Sorry, so it's 10 life? No, X life. X, oh, I should explain this. In magic, X means you can pay any amount. It's up to you. So you can put one? So you can pay one life, yeah. And then all creatures get negative of that life? So they get minus X, X. So they get, if you pay one life, they get minus one, one until the end of turn. So if you put eight life. Eight life, all creatures will get minus eight, eight. So they will die. So this one will die. Well, that one will die, yes. Goes on the battlefield. Well, then what happens to you? That also includes your creature. That says all creatures. So that includes all the creatures on the battlefield. Oh, so it's like a kamikaze move. Uh, we call it a board wipe. I see. Um, this is a banger. Is that your final answer? Yeah. This is a banger. Ah, oh, this, this is cool. Banger. Yeah, that seems this cool. This is one of the best board wipes in the Yeah, that's so yeah. cool. I mean, yeah. it's like, I guess you'll take the hit, but. If yeah, because if, if you run a deck, like a Kraken deck. Yeah. They have high toughness. Yeah. So you can just pay. I can pay seven life, and he'll still be on the battlefield, and everything else will get minus seven seven. So Dang. my opponents, like if they're, it depends on the strategy they're running. But soldiers are one ones. If I had forty soldiers, they'd all get nuked. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, that's pretty good. But then you take some hit too, so you have to consider. Yeah, you have to think about it. Like, is it? You have to think if it's worth losing it to get rid of this of something that your opponent has. I see. It's that's why this is the most complex game. It's so many little things you have to think about. And how do you keep tally of your lives? Um, we do things back. Well, the OGs in Magic, what they do is they have a notepad and they write them. Like they'll oh be like, you gosh. start at forty. All right, I just lost six life. I crossed it out. I'm at thirty-four. But us commander players, we we have like an app on our phone that has everybody's life. There's an app for this? Yeah, there's multiple apps, and you can just. Oh, keep that's track cool. Because I was gonna say like one of the implements some tech to do it, but I guess they use an yeah. app. But is it an official, like, Magic the Gathering app? No, because you don't need it for the life count. Because, like, you're... I mean, there's an official Magic app for tournaments where they'll have you do the... Oh, okay. There'll All be right. one built into the app. But, like, when you're playing with friends, you don't need that app. You can just get any... I see. No, that's cool. Nah, that one's cool, man. This is, like, the only one I understood from, like... That's a pretty good one. I actually understood it Decent from the get-go. Like, finally. All right, let's see. Last one. I am what? Three? You're three for nine. You're back to 33.333%. Let's <laughs> go to right there. All right, let's see. Oh, I can't pick it up. Yeah, Read see. it out loud to the viewers at home. Manaplasm. Better mocking you. Mana. <laughs> Manaplasm. Creature. Ooze. 
Whenever you play a spell, Mana Plasm gets plus whatever life, plus whatever life. No. What? It, if it doesn't say pay life, it, it gets plus XX, and then keep reading. Until end of turn, where X is the spell's converted mana cost. Do you understand what that means? So the X in this case is mana. Mana. I can't even say it. What is this flavor text? Urak froze when he heard it. <laughs> that was his first mistake. He turned in a caster magic ward spell. That was his last. Flavor text is probably the best thing in magic. There's one with an ape and he's like, I want a banana this big. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the best flavor text. <laughs> That was funny, bro. What? <laughs> I would say that was a banger. Yeah, a banger, just for the flavor. Yeah. There's a lot of cards that aren't good, but have banger flavor text. There you go, bro. Yeah. Wait, that was good? No. Oh, man. But the flavor text is a banger. See, if you would have thrown that in here, it would have been like, banger, just because of that, bro. Uh, mana Plasm. Where you play, whenever you play a spell, Mana Plasm gets plus mana, plus mana? No, plus XX. Yeah, but it, there, until end it, of turn. Oh, it's plus X. XX, so that means power toughest. He gets that added on to his toughness, where X is the mana cost of a spell you cast, right? Yeah, but then the X you decide too? No, it's whatever you're playing, like whatever spell you're casting. Like, I'm gonna play Smothering Type that has four mana cost. That's gonna get plus four, four until the end of the turn. See, so like that. And that's for each spell you cast in your turn. Oh, this is a banger then. Is that your final answer? Yeah. This is bottom of the barrel. This is buns, dude. If it had trample, <laughs> it would be. <laughs> Okay, at best, but yeah. But what if you want to like? Because right, like, let's say you need two, you want to buff your thing by two, so it'll cost two. Yeah, if you play, and just you playing increase magic. by two and two. Yeah. Why is that not good? This isn't good because like, if this had trample, trample means if he's an eight eight and you block with a three three, that means this is gonna take three, and since this has trample, you're gonna take five. You're gonna take the excess damage. Okay, but in what case is that common? Because then I can cast like 10 spells for five each and he'll get plus 50-50 and I'll block it with a 1-1. One, one. I did not understand that. <laughs> okay. Because it's, he can be, like since this doesn't have trample, you, this can be a 7-8 and when it attacks, I can block it with a 1-1 one, one, and then my 1-1 one, one will die but I won't take any damage. But if this had trample, trample means that excess damage dealt to a creature would mm -hmm. be dealt to its controller. So since this has seven, and let's say I'm blocking with a 1-1 one, one soldier. You die. Yeah, this dies, but it only takes one of the seven. The remaining six, which is excess damage, goes to the whoever the player you're attacking. Wait, because players have lives? Yeah, it's players that have lives. It's a 40 life at the beginning of the game. Your starting life total is 40. Oh, so it's not just your stuff that has lives. You yeah. have life. Everybody, when this card came out, everybody thought this was going to be fantastic. Yeah, because it almost seems like one of these. Yeah, like they thought it was going to be um, like broken. Yeah. But the fact is that anybody can block this with a 1-1, one, one, and it could be as big as it wants, unless you give it trample with another means. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. I see. So make if that work, had trample, this card, would be, this card would be good. Oh, I see. Yeah. Man. So what are you, 3 for 10, 30%? 30. But don't worry, bonus round! Ah, Hand me dead. that card without looking at it, on top of the deck box. One? Yes. Ah. Let's see. We have a bonus card, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what place is this? This is, in the magic world, this is a university. A university? University. This is like some Lord of the Rings thing. Bruh. All right, <laughs> the last and final card which is the bonus round, is Golos Tireless Pilgrim. Golos Tireless Pilgrim. This is, I probably should have told you, but legendary creatures can be commanders, so they can be the leaders of your army. Yeah. So, he usually is a commander. I'll give you that, at least. That's all I'm gonna give you, though. Oh, man. Tireless Pilgrim, legendary artifact creature. When Golos Tireless Pilgrim enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card. Put that card onto the battlefield, tap, and shuffle your library. That is a lot of mana, though. Two, four, five, two, four, six, seven. Exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn without paying their mana cost. Exile. Okay. Exile. Exile, because you have a graveyard and then you have exile. Okay. So, 
Exile just means you put it in exile, and then but he says that you can play them, so they don't just stay in exile. So exile the top three cards of your library. But that's the thing. How do you consider top? The one, two. Oh, three. okay. So it's not about like their strength or what they are. No, it's just the top. When it's, it's library, it's like top or bottom of the library. Oh, Unless no, it's a okay. Library. So exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn without paying their mana cost. So it'll cost five to get them. To put them onto the battlefield. It'll yes. cost seven to use that. Yeah. Golly, that's a lot of mana. Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> and the concept artist. He knows cool. a little bit about magic now, so it's like he's looking at it like, ah, oh, so much mana. Look at you. Oh. I'm turning into I'm turning you into a magic player yet. It's three for, three for five is strength and what? Strength and, and, and life. Toughness. It's power and toughness. So power and toughness. So how much damage it deals, how much it can take before it dies. So if you pay five life with a toxic deluge, he will die. So much mana. So much mana. It's not that strong. Life is mid. Bottom of the barrel. Your okay, final answer? Yeah. This card's a banger. <laughs> I'm dead. I absolutely love Golos. A uh, little bit of a story time. He's banned in Commander. He was once upon a time the most popular commander in the format, uh -huh. and they had to ban him because he's too powerful. But he costs so much money. I mean, currency, I guess you can call it. Mana. <laughs> I remember. So how do you even? How many turns before you even get get to use something like that? When I first got into Magic, he was the most popular commander. This was before he was banned. And I was like, you know what? I want to buy a Golos deck. So I bought the deck a day or two after. I haven't even gotten in the mail. Like it takes a week to get in the mail. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for it to come in. It got banned. <laughs> what? When it was in the mail, I had bought an entire deck and it got banned. And I was like, bruh, But you can still no use way. it, right? With your friends and stuff? Yeah, my friends like play it. But it was like a budget deck. It was like a little $40 deck. So it wasn't that bad. Uh-huh. I would like this. But one. why like why is that ban uh, how do they even ban their own cards? Alright, so this this ability takes seven mana. It takes five to get him in. Yeah. You cast him. Before you cast him, you are ramping. You are ramping up the ass to get him onto the battlefield. Right. So you're just obviously a bunch like, of to get that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, but that's like he's he's all colors. He's all five colors. So he's got green, so he can has his spells where he can ramp. As soon as he enters the battlefield, you can get any land from your library onto the battlefield. So remember that ancient tomb I showed you that taps for two mana? Yeah. You can get that and put it onto the battlefield. So basically he's five, you can get that onto the battlefield. And by the next turn you can activate that ability. You activate that ability, boom. You exile the top three, and now you get all three of these for free. Because you don't have to pay their mana values. Oh, okay, man. So you cast this. So the only perfect. downside is just how cast expensive that. it is to get them in yeah. the first place. And then gamble. But other than that, it's an effective anything. card. Get a chaos warp into my hand. Like boom, you just got all those for free. I see. And the concept like is really cool. Concept art. I know. I love Golos. That is that is the original easier. Golos that got banned. That's him. I, that's not proxy. I leave him on my desk to remember how times were tough. This is an actual card? Yeah. You can take it out if you want. That card was $25 and after it got banned it was $3. <laughs> I thought it would go up. That in was price, so though. rough, dude. I thought rarity would make it more. That was the most expensive part of the deck. <laughs> you paid like half. Fifty dollars. The, the deck was fifty dollars, but he was like another twenty bucks. Thank you all for watching. Keep on the lookout. We're gonna do this again with the crossover cards. Fire. So I get him into it. Fire, fire. The goal is to get him into magic. <laughs> it's like bribing so him. So you can play. You can, we can. These can turn into gameplay videos. Oof. I'm teaching you how to play. I'm gonna throw myself out to the window when I don't understand. Download all your knowledge into my brain. Down, that's years of knowledge. <laughs> um, but other than that, thank you guys for watching. I've been Jake. This is my friend Raymond, and we'll see you guys in the next video.